Okay, I, I like to use visual props in order to explain uh, very simple things, um, including scion wood. Uh, scion wood is the one year growth uh, of an apple branch. The apple branch is also called a fruiting scaffold. So uh, the one year growth will not produce apples immediately. Um, they begin to put out fruit spurs after the first year, from year two to uh, year four. Uh, as I've just told you, this branch or fruiting scaffold is uh, four years old, and uh, we can actually count the age of a tree if you encounter one and it's a very large tree, if you have the time to do it, you can start at the terminal wood of the tree and then go down to the next branch. So this is one year, this is two years, this is down to three years, and this is four year, and this is the point where it meets uh, uh, the other portion of the scaffold, uh, which is probably sturdy and attached to the trunk of the tree. Um, all of this wood qualifies as scion wood, but you're probably not going to get a successful graft if you use something older than one year wood. Uh, as you can see, this wood, well, this is actually a piece of scion wood. This is new growth but you can see how thin it is in comparison to the, uh, to, to the whips out here, and that's because this portion of the branch has already been in shade, and this portion of the branch is re reaching out to the sun. That's why you see the curvature in them. Um, and um, if you're harvesting scion wood, uh, the way to do it is to, let's go to the most vigorous branch here. This one, if we follow it down from the tip to this callus, uh, this callus is there because this, uh, the growth of this branch was stunted by the uh, um, by the drought that we had this summer. So the trees are affected by that. So this portion of the wood is probably weaker uh, and you want to go to a point where the buds are stronger. So you might cut away that portion. You could try it as scion wood, but it may not be very strong. And then uh, you would want at least 10 inches and bring it down to a branch where there is a bud. You can leave this on the tree uh, to let these buds below become the, fru the, the first fruit spurs. It, it'll put out uh, some additional growth, but then you're developing fruit spurs. What you don't want to use um, is the vigorous growth called um, water sprouts. This is a two-year water sprout and they're generally very vertical along the, and they grow off of the more mature fruiting scaffolds. Uh, the reason you don't want to do it is because they're a little too vigorous. Uh, this water sprout is two years old, and even though it has fruit spurs here, uh, this scion wood may not actually produce the true uh, variant of the apple that's on the tree. Uh, water sprouts tend to produce um, an apple which might be called a sport. And a sport has uh, less of the common characteristics of the variety and, in fact, uh, might produce a better apple, a better variant, but uh, you're also less, uh, it's also less successful as a material to use as, um, uh, for grafting. But I'm going to use the wood just for gem demonstration purposes, and we're going to try a, uh, 
without injury. <laughs> We're going to try a graft called the whip and tongue, which is a very common graft. And I'm going to find my, I'm, I'm going to borrow these. I'm going to establish this. This is the rootstock. And that this is the scion wood that we want to uh, apply to the rootstock. The first cut is called the whip. And a whip is a diagonal cut right through the branch. And I think I'll do it here. And basically, you are not so much cutting up as you are pulling the branch through the wood. And you want to have a, um, a diagonal cut, which is about um, oh, no more than, than an inch and a half. But uh, optimum would be about, uh, about an inch and an eighth. And um, sometimes on the first cut, the, uh, this cut may have a slight curve in it. So you check that by placing your knife across to see where the light is coming through. And it's more than likely that the problem area is right here on the shoulder. And uh, we're going to do a similar cut on the rootstock. I'm just cleaning it off so that the uh, cambium layer is exposed. The cambium layer is that little bit of green that you'll see just underneath the bark. And uh, the rest is uh, the pith of the wood. Uh, it's green. It's, it's very tough. Uh, but also, it can have a tendency to, to split just suddenly as you're uh, working it. So um, you match one to the other. And there's not, uh, there's not a great alignment in terms of the match of the diameter. But, w but we're still going to use this. We're not going to waste it. So in this cut, we're going to make a wedge out of this shape here by cutting down into the wood from about this location about three quarters of an inch, five eighths to three quarters of an inch. I'm making a mark so that I can see it. And I think I'll put my glasses on so I can see it too. <clears throat> and I'm inserting the knife into this cut. And I'm going to travel downward at an angle like this to uh, make the tongue shape. And I'm applying a very modest amount of pressure. As you can see, I'm also cutting by rocking the knife Down, down to just about the, uh, the shoulder. And uh, then we might want to open it up a little bit so that you have a, uh, what we might call a shark's mouth. And we'll do the same on the scion.
very slowly. Sometimes um, for your own safety, since some of you may not be um, experienced with, uh, with the process, just for your own safety, you can take a piece of masking tape and tape it below the area you're grafting so that in the event that the wood splits, uh, the tape will actually arrest the, uh, the split before the knife reaches your hand. So we're opening this one up. And now we're going to uh, match the two. Uh, if we didn't do this, uh, the tongue procedure, we, we, we could actually take this and put the two pieces together and tape it up and it would still, uh, it, it would still callous. And, um, but, um, uh, and I guess that's why it's also called the bench graft because the, the tongue uh, actually acts as a seat or, or a bench. And then we put the, um, put the two pieces together. And uh, the diameter of the wood, as I indicated before, probably uh, would not match entirely. In that case, you want to favor one side. So we can see where, it's, uh, where there's a gap here on this side, but here, it's, it's nice and tight and there's almost no daylight. And you would do this when you have uh, a larger discrepancy in the, um, you know that, you do. <laughs> here and then here, mm -hmm. see the difference. Good. And then it's tighter there. So the cambium layer is matched uh, along uh, one surface. And the next, oh, sorry. And the next thing we'll do is to. Do the drawing for, it's a little hard to see. That's great. Maybe that'll show people. Thank you, yeah. Doug, thank you very much. Uh, there are, uh, there is information uh, out on the table here. Uh, also, explaining uh, resources, uh, also explaining the um, whip and tongue graph with illustrations of, of the whip and tongue. Uh, the next thing we do is that we um, is that we use a grafting rubber band to cinch the graft tight. And these will be uh, provided for your use. So once the alignment is made, uh, you'll take a grafting rubber band, and uh, these have a lot, of, they're, they're very specifically made for, for grafting. They have an awful lot of stretch in them. There is a point that if they're overly stretched, they'll snap, uh, but uh, you'll just have to learn 
uh, by experience um, what that point is. So the first thing you do is lay the grafting uh, rubber band below, well below the graft, and in a downward orientation. You stretch this, your first turn is over the top of the piece that you place there. And then from this point on, you overlap the previous location all the way up to the top pulling lightly Cover it completely. The, uh, the way it's being wrapped is, is, uh, is that it uh, keeps the water running down the branch. At the top, you want to make a loop. And I have arthritic hands, so this is difficult for me. But uh, anyway, you want to make a loop. So that it's closed off. Uh, the second thing you'll do is to take some grafting tape. And this is a paraffin tape. To uh, cover the band. Again, uh, the first overlap is uh, with your thumb on it at the bottom. You come back in reverse to cover that up. The tape is also very stretchy, and it will break like that. But uh, you can pick up where the break was and then continue to cover the rubber band. Up to the top. And at the top, basically just turn it over and then with the, uh, with the heat of your hands and the friction, Uh, it will stay in place, but to make sure that, that it doesn't wash out. We might use a sealer, which can be, uh, this is very common. It's, it's the, uh, the wound dressing to cover the top to ensure that you have a waterproof seal. Of course, all of the water is going to run down the branch. And then uh, um, you don't need all of, these, um, all of these buds. And I would say, uh, in practice, uh, you should retain three. So I'm counting from the base, and this is one, two, three. And there, I'm cutting a 45 degree angle and also sealing this. And uh, with the roots on the rootstock, this is, this is ready to go. Um, not, not necessarily to be planted in the soil right away, but um, you'll see that each of these rootstocks are packed in uh, a mixture of peat moss and uh, potting uh, soil 
and they're wrapped in uh, a piece of newspaper. Uh, so uh, you'll be able to select the rootstock that you want, and this is this is where where you'll you'll start. Uh, once you have the graft, uh, take it home. Um, dampen the uh, the the newspaper with uh, a spray bottle to keep the the roots damp. You might then uh, put a rubber band here. Uh, put it in a location where it's warm but uh, is not exposed to uh, natural light. Uh, I like to put it on top of our uh, refrigerator because the motor is always working and uh, it. it it produces a nice microclimate on top of the uh, on top of the refrigerator, and keep it out of keep it out of the light, uh, not in complete darkness, but but out of direct light. And depending on the variety that you choose, um, you will uh, begin to see these buds swell. Uh, from Oh, my experience last year is from uh, seven days to 21 days. So don't give up on it if it runs for, th for three or four weeks because uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that, that the graft has failed. And uh, then you can, you can put the, uh, uh, the rootstock, you can, you can take your graft, put your rootstock in, in a pot. Um, uh, you can put it outdoors if it's warm enough, but protect it from animals. Protect it from birds as well. Uh, once these buds begin to grow, they're uh, very tender, they're very green, and uh, you know they'll, they'll put out, they'll probably put out six inches of, of growth each easily. And uh, sparrows love to to come down and rest on on a branch like that, and uh, that that can their their weight is enough to uh, uh, to break the uh, the bud off the uh, uh, the bark. Uh, eventually, you uh, I I would also uh, permit some of these buds to to uh, grow as well in the event that the rootstock, uh, in, in the event that the graft doesn't take uh, as long as the scion is alive and um, you, you can re-graft the rootstock uh, and, and whatever, whatever uh, rootstock, uh, uh, whatever scion material you, you use, uh, uh, wrap it up in, and keep it in your refrigerator so, so that it stays viable. Um, so there are two ways. Yeah, there are two ways to uh, to spell scion, uh, and one is S C I O N. If it works, if it doesn't, it is spelled S I G H O N. Uh, now I want to give you a demonstration of um, the whip and tongue in a situation where uh, the uh, the rootstock is much thicker. Than the uh, <clears throat> maybe here. So in, in, in a situation like this where you have a very thick rootstock and a lean, oh, oh by the way, did I mention that all of the buds have to, ma uh, have to match the same direction? Uh, this year, I actually, I'm going to try uh, grafting the other way just to see what happens. And I'm expecting that if, if it does survive, that it, it's going to create a weeping tree, uh, whip out in, in a bow. Uh, So uh, if, uh, uh, if the material is very thick, uh, first cut it at a 45 degree angle. Okay, I'm going to use this piece as the rootstock. 
Maybe I'll try something a little thicker. Mm. Oh, this would be good. Okay. So uh, to start with, we're not cutting a, uh, a true uh, whip on this. Uh, we're taking the um, we're taking the scion wood and we're putting a whip on it. Again, the shoulder is the problem. The knife is sharp, and you can pair the the uh, the surface down to a nice flat surface. Do you sterilize the knife? What's that? Do you sterilize the knife? Uh, yes, the the knives can be will be sterilized with this. Um, alcohol sanitizer. Um, so I'm going to cut the, the tongue on this. And then I'm going to eye it out. And uh, I'm going to graft right here, just below the bottom of the 45 degree angle. You can see that this is 23 degrees, or half of 45. So right there, rather than cutting a whip, I am just stripping the bark. flattening it out. Then right at the top, I'm starting the, uh, the tongue. And this is OK. So now we have uh, the tongue portion. And then we'll do the bench. Roman, can you remind us how long that cut is for the tongue? Uh, on this one? It, it's about uh, five eighths of an inch, or basically, it should match the uh, the length of of the uh, of the scion wood. Like so. And uh, again, a, a graphing rubber band. Here, we're putting a good cinch on it.
problem with gloves. They get in the way, too. Cinch it, and then it, it's also covered with the uh, uh, the paraffin tape. Um, and just to show you how the callus can pass that around, that is uh, a whip and tongue graft uh, that eventually died on the tree because it was uh, shaded out. So. Uh, once this is done, this really, 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 really wants to live. And um, uh, treat it as well as, as any pet that you've ever had in your life, and it will be very loyal to you. <laughs>